Thanks for joining us. I'm Thomas with the Nebraska Game of Parks Commission, and I'm joined live today with Nebraska's own Greg Wagner, and we're here to talk about floating in Nebraska. So if you have a question for Greg, you can just drop that right below there in the comment section, and we'll get to that right now. I'm going to hand this on over to Greg right now, and he'll start us off. You know, those folks who know me know that I deeply love Nebraska rivers, our water trails. They are treasures. Here on the Cornhusker State, we have 24,000 miles of rivers, streams, and canals to float by canoe, kayak, tube, or tank. And I'll tell you what, we have some beautiful scenic rivers. Maybe some of you have been on the Niobrara River, east of Valentine. Some have been on the upper Missouri River above Ponca State Park. Maybe some of you have been, a lot of you have been, on the Elkhorn River near Omaha, kind of in the Waterloo, Nebraska area on tubes. Or some of you may have done that extreme sports river that we call the Dismal River in the central sand hills near Mullen, Nebraska. Whatever it is, we'd like to hear from you. Maybe you have a favorite stretch of water that you like to float. I think also, too, that July means floating Nebraska rivers in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, our rivers in Nebraska are not uh, really inherently dangerous. They're wonderful for families and beginners. And people ask me all the time, yeah, I'm going to be on a river, probably going to be on the Calamus River near Burwell. What if I tip over in my canoe or my kayak or my tube? Stand up. It's just that simple. But uh, we have a lot of rivers here in Nebraska. They're wonderful places to float, and uh, we would encourage you to get out and do it. And, Thomas, do we have any Facebook questions coming in yet? I got one here. All right, so the first one here is from Michael, and he says, Do tanks have to be licensed like a boat? Good question. Tanks, stock tanks that float on rivers, as long as they're not powered by any mechanical device, they do not need to be licensed or registered nor titled, but those tanks do need the required boating safety equipment, life jackets, bailing bucket, whistle, etc. All right, we got another one here from Alyssa. She wants to know what advice do you have for a first-time tuber? Ah, Tubing is a wonderful, relaxing thing to do on Nebraska rivers. A lot of people like to go on the Niobrara River and, as we have already talked about, on the Elkhorn River. So for beginning tubers, um, hopefully you can swim. You need to know kind of how to swim. No question about that. Uh, I would tell you to please wear your life jacket on inner tubes. They're vessels. The life jacket requirement stands. It applies. And so that means if you're going to be on an inner tube, you're 13 or older, a wearable Coast Guard approved life jacket needs to be on board and preferably worn. Kids on inner tubes, 12 and under, must have their life jackets, like mine, buckled on. And I would tell you to go in a group with someone and go on a short trip to see what you like. All right, the next one here is from Steve. He says, can you kayak on any river? Yeah, the water belongs to the people of the state of Nebraska. The, essentially, the water is public, but the land underneath that water, adjacent to it, including sandbars, belongs to someone. So use our water trail maps that we have on our Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.org. Or if you're going to be on a particular river that doesn't have one of our water trails that have been mapped out, you'll need to contact landowners, go through the Register of Deeds in your county courthouse, find out who owns the land, because you're going to need permission from landowners whether you're going to be launching, taking out, fishing, camping, wading, etc. All right, Megan says she's originally from the Valentine area but now lives in Lincoln. What are some of the best places to go around Lincoln? Around Lincoln. I would encourage you to take a strong look at the Elkhorn River. I kind of like the upper Elkhorn River up near Scribner and Nickerson. doesn't get quite as much traffic on the tube end of things. I would take a strong look at that, and I would think about kayaking it. I would also tell you by canoe, a nice stretch of water to float not far from Lincoln would be the Highway 64 Bridge, the Platte River Landing. That's near Lachera, Nebraska. That's about a four- to five-hour trip in a canoe and you would take out at the Two Rivers State Recreation Area where you'd have your park permit, pay your camping fees, and have your camp already set up. You could canoe literally right into it. That's a nice trek as well. 
All right, we're waiting on some more questions here, but maybe you want to expand a little bit upon this. Nolan had another question about uh, who owns the land like the sandbars and that. Yeah, here in Nebraska, we'll uh, reinforce this, and uh, you have the right, the public right, to float the water. It belongs to all of us, but the land adjacent to it, the land underneath it, or perhaps a sandbar is owned by someone. Here in Nebraska, 97% of the land ownership is private. Yes, you're going to have to get permission, whether verbal or written, to be on that particular water if you don't have any public land near it. So it just comes down to that fact. You need to work with private landowners. And Thomas, most of our landowners in Nebraska are very good uh, about people floating as long as you've done your homework you've asked for permission in advance you've planned out your trip you're not going to have any problems the other thing on landowners two reasons why they will get very very upset of course trespassing is one and the other one is trash always leave the area better than you found it and secondarily i would say fires oh really watch your campfires especially in the sand hills when we have dry conditions Speaking of the sand hills we were talking before, what are some great places out there in western Nebraska to take a look at? I love our sand hills rivers. Cool, seep, spring fed. I think these are the rivers that are least traveled. And we're talking about rivers like the Calamus River near Burwell. Um, I like the Middle Loop River near Mullen. I like the North Loop River, also kind of in that Burwell, Nebraska area. I do like the Dismal River. That's an extreme sports river once again. I like uh, the... Cedar River, which is uh, up near Erickson, also in the Sand Hills. And, of course, the Niobrara River, that should be done on a weekday with all the traffic it gets. But those rivers that are least floated are fantastic. There are outfitters that are available along them. And we should tell you that outfitters and rental uh, businesses for float trip uh, equipment are available right through the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.org. You'll see our water trails maps there, and many of the rivers that I mentioned are mapped out there, and the outfitters that are available along them are also there as well. All right, the next one asks, how, uh, excuse me, are inflatable kayaks, how are inflatable kayaks on rivers? I'm not a big fan of the inflatable kayaks on rivers because of the many snags that you encounter, even though right now, Thomas and, and folks, the inflatable kayaks are pr pretty sturdy, sturdier than ever. I just want uh, I want my Mad River Kevlar kayak uh, to be at my beck and call, not really an inflatable one. But I don't like a lot of the inflatable kayaks primarily because we have a lot of snags. There are everything from rocks sharp rocks on rivers that stick out we have a lot of logs and tree laden snags and rivers we have a lot of fences on uh, the sand hills rivers as well plus there's always sharp objects around bridge pilings and oftentimes you'll kind of bump them it's not that you're going to hit all these but it's always that bumper that scrape that uh, just rakes kayaks the inflatables and you hear uh, the inflatable kayaks, I would be a little leery of, even though they're a little bit better uh, with technology. All right, Teresa is curious. Is there a list of public access to rivers, and can you launch from any bridge or public road? You can't just launch from any bridge or public road. We're going kind of in reverse. And again, on our water trails and uh, our planning and programming division at the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission has done a great job, and they're updating a lot of these too, the water trails. They will tell you on those maps for uh, 10 different stretches of rivers or associated with rivers in Nebraska where you can put in and take out where the public access places are to launch or to uh, disembark. It's just that simple. Use those. You just can't pull over on a road and launch or take out. You cannot use bridges. I will tell you for sure that with the Elkhorn River, uh, the Nebraska State Patrol and law enforcement will ticket site vehicles that are parked on bridges, primarily because it's a tremendous safety hazard because there's a lot of people that are running back and forth. Not a good idea. Bridges are not to be used unless you've touched base with the governing authority of that bridge. And by and large, they're going to tell you no because of the liability and the safety hazards that uh, busy roads and bridges present. So the bridges are not necessarily a go. All right, so 
Trenton's question is, what makes the Dismal so different? I think what makes the Dismal River so different is you're in a slice of Nebraska between um, essentially Mullen and Thedford. You're in the central sand hills. This is like a drainage ditch filled with ice-cold spring water in big, steep, beautiful canyons that becomes an obstacle course. It is an obstacle course, and you can't see around bends, and there's a lot of deadfalls, a lot of windfalls. There are rocks in places, and uh, it's going fairly fast. It's a very fast river. It's narrow, and if you get the canoe or kayak sideways, so it is a challenging river. It is not a river for beginners. It is a river for people who've been on the Niobrara and uh, who've done a lot of canoeing or kayaking. It is not to be tubed, but it is fantastic. I've never seen more wildlife in my life than on the Dismal River in central Nebraska Sandhills. All right, this one's a little off topic, but how often do we have game wardens on the Missouri River patrolling for overharvest of fish? We take any and all questions, and I love that one. Um, this officers working with the Iowa Department of Natural Resource Conservation officers and uh, Douglas and Sarpy County Sheriff's offices uh, were on the river in full force making a lot of boat safety checks, uh, checking for regulation violations, making sure that our boaters on the river are safe, and coupled with that, checking for fishing permits, and checking for anyone who may not be adhering to our daily bag limit or perhaps possession limit uh, rules that we have in place. So we are on the Missouri River in full force, as are other law enforcement entities. If you think we're done on the Mighty Mo, we're not. Uh, it is a river that has a lot of traffic, and uh, we'll work it by boat and by bank. And uh, don't be surprised if you're checked by a conservation officer from Nebraska riding with an Iowa Department of Natural Resources officer or Douglas or Sarpy County Sheriff or local county sheriff. All right, the next one here is from Scott. He asks, are there better or more comfortable life jackets than the old school orange ones? There are. And, you know, Thomas, do we have that one accessible? We'll get Kara Pesic to, uh, to grab it there. This is live on Facebook, everybody, Nebraska Game and Parks Commission's website. Thank you, Kara Pesic. We have Alyssa back there, and, of course, Thomas is here. Um, I'm wearing one of the old-school May West-type life jackets, of course, Coast Guard-approved wearable. Um, Thomas now is holding up one of the inflatable life jackets that are also available to be worn. Coast Guard approved, hit the water, they inflate, they have a CO2 cartridge on them. They are not for kids. You'll need to adhere to the specs that are on those. They're essentially for adults, young adults, but the inflatable life jackets are wonderful. They work, and they don't ruin tans as my wife would tell you, on uh, young adults or, or adults, and they're very comfortable to be worn, and they can be worn. All right, Jennifer asks, what is the closest river to tank down by Grand Island? Closest river to tank down by Grand Island would be the Cedar River. And uh, there is tanking that is done on the Cedar River near Fullerton, Nebraska. That is a short drive away. There is an outfitter there. Uh, the Cedar River near Fullerton from Belgrade to Fullerton is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Don't even uh, look like you're in Nebraska when you're on that Cedar River. Good catfishing river there. Also, up and down the Cedar River, short drive away, wonderful tanking, wonderful tubing on the Cedar River from Erickson all the way down to Fullerton. All right, we got another random one here for you. Paula asks, what do I use to trap woodchuck in my yard? <laughs> wow, we're getting everything there. Um, you know, the big thing I would tell you, um, the woodchuck, of course, is a vegetarian. It likes leafy green things. And I tell people this, it's better to invest in cheap chicken wire than to try to go out and buy live traps and try to mess with an animal that's going to scry excuse me, scratch and bite you. And uh, I would tell you it's your vegetable garden, isn't it? I know it is. So use that cheap chicken wire and double strand it up if you want. Um, that's the best thing to do. Make sure you go into the ground at least about six inches. Better to do the cheap chicken wire thing than to try to uh, follow rules and regulations with woodchucks, live trapping, and releasing. And, you know, with live trapping, 
uh, animals like the woodchuck, and you're going to move them or you're going to displace them. Uh, really what enters into the picture is you're going to move an animal to a habitat that's unfamiliar to them. So the humaneness comes into play. The other thing that comes into play, too, is that you may transplace a problem to another landowner or to another person's vegetable garden. So the best thing to do is to get them off the menu by using cheap chicken wire. The animal doesn't have to be harmed. You don't have to mess with it. It works well. You can electrify that fence if you need to on a low grade there with your vegetable garden. It is the thing to do, the way to go. And you know, also too, with live trapping animals, not a good idea because we don't know and you don't know what you're transplacing as far as diseases, bacterial infections, or parasites from that woodchuck to another community of them that are uh, down the road. All right, Randy asks, do you have to register your kayak or canoe with the state? You do not have to register your kayak or canoe with the state of Nebraska unless you're going to put some sort of mechanical device like a trolling motor or any other motor that's going to propel it. So no, you know, most of us, we're using paddle power. Right here is my paddle. So you do not. You still need to have all the required equipment on board the kayaks and the canoes in uh, from the July 4th week I'll tell you from our conservation officer reports I will tell you that a lot of kayakers did not even have life jackets on board so wearable Coast Guard approved life jacket for uh, an accessible for someone basically 13 or older 12 and under have got to have them on uh, you'll need a bailing bucket and you, you're going to want to have one if you're canoeing with me. Uh, you'll need a whistle and put an extra paddle in there as well. They're collapsible anyway. All right, so before you had talked about some extreme sports uh, rivers, you want to talk more about those? There is another one. We don't have a water trail on it. It is the Upper Snake River from Highway 61 north of Hyannis. And it basically goes to the Doughboy Bridge. It's a small county bridge above Merritt Reservoir. Um, all landowner permission required. No open fires. Um, about a four-day trip. Very good brown trout, rainbow trout fishing in places. Um, a completely isolated river. Uh, Scenic river, beautiful river, rugged water, some class two and three water, three water in places there. Waterfalls are on the rivers. It is not for the faint of heart. It is kind of a survival type trip, but it is worth it to do the homework. If you want more information on the Upper Snake River, please see me at the Omaha office of the Game and Parks Commission, and I will assist you, but you're still going to need to do some homework on the landowners. My iPad overheated here. I'm going to have to take a second. All right, so here's the next one. Maybe you want to touch on this again. How do you deal with screaming landowners along the river? Screaming landowners along the river? Unfortunately, that particular landowner, that farmer or rancher, uh, probably, most likely, has had a bad experience uh, with folks. The key is is just to wave, be pleasant, and float on by. And you shouldn't be stopping anyway unless you have landowner permission. And just say, I'm sorry for other floaters that have come this direction, left trash. I'm sorry, sir. We're moving down. We're utilizing an area where we have permission or where we uh, have public access. I'm so sorry. And um, maybe we can stop and help him perhaps pick up trash if there's a lot of trash on that particular water. That's the best thing to do. All right, the next one. Is it illegal to have multiple people on a single seated kayak? You can't overload boats, and one thing that we do is we're looking for the capacity of that particular vessel on the water, and if it's got one seat, it has one seat for a reason. One seat for a reason, and that means no overloading a vessel for what it is rated. It is just that simple. Overloaded vessels cause more problems than you would know. You can't traverse them in tough water or coming up next to bridge pilings. So you need to look to see what that particular vessel is rated for by weight or by occupancy. All right, here's another one here from Kara. She asks, can someone fence off land around public bridge to keep people out? Yes, there can be 
uh, fences around bridges. There can be fences across the river, cattle fences, livestock fences. Landowners have that right uh, to fence across rivers or around bridges if they do indeed own that particular bridge or if that's a county bridge or if it is a, a state highway bridge interstate bridge uh, yes those governing authorities can fence uh, that area off they're doing it for public safety they don't want anybody to get hurt they don't want people parking up there causing a road hazard a safety hazard so that is allowable the thing I would tell you on Sand Hills rivers whether it's the Calamus the Middle Loop, the Dismal, the Snake River is, if you want to get a cattle rancher upset, mess with their fences. Don't mess with their fences. You have the right to portage. You have the right to go under that fence. Be very, very careful doing it. Um, a lot of times there's rusty barbed wire on those. Be extra careful. The motto is, when in doubt, get out. You have the right to portage. And don't be tying up fences and don't mess with our cattle rancher fences. Is there waiting on a, well, there's another question here. What do you re recommend bringing along in addition to required safety equipment or tubing on a tanking trip? Wow, I love that question. Uh, beyond the required equipment, what do I use when I'm kayaking, canoeing, tubing? Here's one thing. A throwable life preserver. It looks like a baseball base with handles on it. I have that attached to a 20-foot rope, Thomas, because... I'm bad with aiming anyway, and I want repeated throws if I have to get to somebody, either on a tube trip, tank trip, canoe kayak, that is quintessential, in my opinion, to have. And I always have actually a couple of extra paddles there in that boat because snags sometimes grab paddles. Snags are not alive, but at times I think they are. In rivers so a couple extra paddles for sure and the other thing I like to have is I like to have a good bailing bucket or each person needs a bailing bucket if you've ever turned over like in a canoe for example maybe you're on the Niobrara River and it's just so full of water you can't lift it you got to bail it so what I use I use one gallon cleaned out milk jugs cut in half with the handle left on it they are wonderful to attach to a rope uh, on each seat to have available so not one person's bailing two people are bailing those are the things the additional things that I would add as far as additional equipment that will make your trip more comfortable and you may save someone's life with them alright the next one here they want to know your opinion what is your favorite river to tank down favorite river why well, I'm being put on the spot here Favorite river, favorite river to tank? Is that was that the question? Okay, we'll do that one. I I like the Cedar River near Fullerton, in the east central part of the state, kind of right in the middle. I like the Cedar River. It's wonderful. It's great. Um, I do like the Cedar River. You know, the tanking scenario began on the upper Cedar River. Uh, near Erickson with outfitters there. I like the Cedar River near Fullerton for tanking, for um, kayaking. The Dismal. I like the Dismal River, the Central Sand Hills. For canoeing, we've not talked about it, but the Upper Missouri River area, Ponca State Park, going all the way up into the Sunshine Bottoms, is spectacular. It's beautiful. The water in the Missouri River there is green and clear and gorgeous. I love it. That would be my favorite stretch for canoeing. If I've got a tube, it's probably going to be the Niobrara River on a weekday. No question. A weekday to me means Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this time of year. And uh, I, I love tubing on, on the Niobrara River, Scenic River. Secondarily, it would be the Elkhorn River also on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday near Waterloo, Nebraska, not far from Omaha. So th those are my faves. You want to talk more about Niobrara River? It seems to be obviously a very popular area and up by the Valentine area. On a bucket list for all of you, anyone in Nebraska or beyond for an outdoor adventure needs to be a float trip on one of the top 10 floating rivers in the country, canoeing rivers labeled by Backpacker Magazine, the Niobrara River east of Valentine, Nebraska. Please go on a weekday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you're restricted to a weekend, try to use the Fridays and the Mondays. Here's the thing I recommend too, the outfitters will really work with you, wonderful outfitters up there. 
Uh, everybody's kind of heard of the shotgun start in golf. That's where when you have a big golfing outing that some people are starting on like the fifth hole, some are starting on the first one, some are on the twelfth hole. Well, the outfitters will work with you. So if I'm going to go up on a Saturday morning, everybody is at the put-in. Everybody is at the Fish and Wildlife Service put-in near the Cornell Bridge. It's wild. It's jam-packed. Everybody's excited to get on the river. But what you need to do is work with the outfitter. You put in at Smith Falls in the middle of that stretch. You see? You're avoiding a lot of traffic, and you're going to canoe from Smith Falls down to Rocky Ford, and then you're going to do the converse of that, the flip of that, the next day, you'll avoid a lot of river traffic, tubing, kayaking, tanking, what have you, if you do that beyond the weekdays. But you will go through a slice of several ecosystems in the lower Niobrara River east of Valentine, Nebraska. You will think you're in some other place. It is exquisitely beautiful. If you think Nebraska's flat, boring farmland filled with telephone poles, you are sadly wrong. Again, a bucket list item needs to be the Niobrara River float trip that you need to take east of Valentine, Nebraska. All right. Well, we're still waiting on a few more questions to come in. You can keep dropping those down there in the comments section. I'm just going to pass this over to you, and I'm going to let you just talk more about it. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge fan of Nebraska's outdoor scene. Um, there's no question about that. And I tell people all the time, we have a river for you. We have a water trail for you. We do. And one thing that we've not mentioned here are floating some of the creeks. And uh, I know Jeff Curse of Nebraska Land Magazine, you know, loves um, the new water trail, relatively new water trail that we've established uh, that planning and programming has helped establish on the Elkhorn River in northeastern Nebraska. I believe it is Logan Creek. And uh, it is fantastic. One of the creeks I like near the Omaha and Lincoln areas is we have a place called Catfish Run Wildlife Management Area on the Salt Creek. Not far from Mahoney State Park. We have access there. And a great trip, multiple hour trip, is to go from Catfish Run Wildlife Management Area in between Omaha and Lincoln on Salt Creek near Ashland and go all the way to Shram Park State Recreation Area. So you've got the creek aspect of it that it widens out into that scenic Platte River Valley. So I would not overlook some of the creeks we have. Let us also point out that uh, on the canal system, the Kearney Whitewater Association has a neat new 2.3 mile trip that they've established, and I've not done it, but it looks great. Julie Geyser, out of our North Platte office at Gaiman Parks, public information officer, has been hard at work. She's got on the canal system out in her neck of the woods a wonderful float trip there uh, for a day. So don't overlook the creeks, also the canals that we have for float trip options. You know, I calculated uh, the other day that chances are where you live here in the Husker State, or maybe you're on a border state here, within about a 45-minute drive of your house, you have a river or a water trail to be floated. All right, we do have a few more questions. I must not have a little issue here. All right, so Nick asks, how do boating under the influence laws apply to tanking and tubing? The BUI laws, that would be really a question for our conservation officers. I know that uh, the BUI definitely applies to motorized craft, and uh, we'll have to double-check that to see how that applies to our non-powered float trip mechanisms, uh, anything powered by mechanical devices, same as a motor vehicle, the uh, BUI law applies. We'll check if we can and get back to Nick to see if that applies or how that applies to non-powered watercraft. I tell people this, if you're going to uh, go down a river, you're going to tube a river perhaps, and uh, you've got people of age, and uh, you want to have a cool, refreshing adult beverage, in your group, you need to have what's called a designated floater, a designated tuber, an individual who can swim, who does not drink, that keeps an eye on everybody in that particular group when it comes to alcohol. The other thing that I'd recommend to people is, you want to have a beer, you want to have an alcoholic beverage, um, after you have one, then drink a bottle of water. You alternate. And maybe you want one more beer, then you're going to have a bottle of water. Then you can stay mostly hydrated, and then you can uh, come home at the end of your trip, and you won't have any trouble with an alcohol-related accident. 
All right, here's another one. Sean wants to know, how do you go about getting a landowner's permission to use sandbars? Getting landowner permission to use sandbars, you've got homework involved. You need to go through the county register of deeds in the county where you're looking to float on that particular waterway, that particular river or water trail. You need to do your homework to find out who owns it. Sometimes the local conservation officer or local game and parks commission field staff, whatever division they're in, can also help you out as far as finding landowners or trying to connect with them so you can get permission. All right, we're going to do one more here. Randy asks, kayaking the dismal, will a 14-foot kayak work through there? Yes, 14-foot kayak on the dismal. Um, it's a little long. It's a little long going around those turns, but it can be done. I hope your, your strokes are up to par, and I hope you're in pretty good shape because you're going to be paddling around those turns quite a bit. But it's long, but it can be done. I'd rather kayak than canoe the Dismal River. I'd rather be in a 14-foot kayak than a 16-foot canoe. It's that simple. All right, well, that'll wrap it up for us today. If you have any more questions, you can continue to drop those in the comments section. We'll get those answered for you. Thanks for joining